Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to Reading Video Scopes and Color Correction inside Adobe Premiere Pro's CS6. This is just the closest thing I know that comes to magic, being able to, to really take a look at what's inside our pictures, analyze them for grayscale and color levels, and then correct problems, whether it's something that's washed out or needs to have the time of day changed or we've got a color cast. When we're fixing problems or changing the look, that's where color correction gets involved, and that is what I want to talk about today. What I want to cover in this session is to focus on three areas. I want to show you how to display, read, and understand Premiere's video scopes, how to make a fast color adjustment, and how to make a manual primary color adjustment. We'll be looking exclusively at Premiere Pro's CS6. SpeedGrade and other third-party software are reserved for a future session. Color correction fixes image problems. Color correction is generally done inside Premiere. Color grading gives your images a specific look. Color grading is generally done using SpeedGrade or DaVinci Resolve or other color grading software which is used outside of Premiere after editing is complete. There are three principal scopes inside Premiere, the Waveform Monitor, the Vector Scope, and the RGB Parade. The waveform monitor tells us everything we need to know about the grayscale value of an image, but nothing about color because it displays image grayscale values. The vector scope tells us everything we need to know about color, but nothing about black and white because it displays the color values of an image. And the RGB parade it displays the amount of red, green, and blue in an image. The, it's basically three waveform monitors in the same scope. One showing the red channel, one showing the green channel, and one showing the blue channel. There are two parade scopes in Premiere. I prefer the RGB version. There are other scopes, but these three are the most important. When we talk color correction, we're always dividing the image into two sections, the grayscale values, how light or dark each individual pixel is, and the color values, what color, what shade, what hue and saturation each pixel is. When we talk grayscale, we talk ranges. There's seven ranges. There's super white, which are white levels, grayscale values over 100%. And this grid that we're looking here is an enlargement of the waveform monitor white levels, which are levels that are exactly at 100% where the top of that green line is. Highlights, levels between about 65 and 100%. This is the lighter portions of the image. Midtones, also called mids and mid grays. These are video levels between about 35 and 65%. Shadows, also called the blacks. Shadows are video levels between 0% and 35%. At zero, is black. That's where the video level is 0%. Blacks are as dark as any of your colors can go. Below that is super black, which are levels below 0. Super blacks can extend all the way down to negative 20, and super whites go to about 109%. You don't want to have levels over 100%, and you don't want to have levels below 0%. One of the things that we do in color correction is to make sure our white levels don't exceed 100%, and our black levels don't go below 0%. Notice over on the right is a vertical green bar. That vertical green bar represents the entire range of all the pixels in your image. Sometimes you can't see them on the scope, and the green bar helps you to see, do I have an extended range, in this case from 0 to 100%, or just a portion of that range. Here I have a series of shots that we all need to look at and correct. So let's hit the home key. We'll start with the easy ones first, the scenic. All right, we'll go back to our workspace, color correction. And just because I can, I'm going to select all these clips, Command A, go to the effects folder. This time I go to video filters, color correction, and I grab the three-way color corrector, drag it on top, and notice that it's applied to all the selected clips at the same time. So now let's go to the first clip, select it, put our playhead in the middle of it. Okay, that's what we saw before. You always analyze by looking at the waveform first. So I go to the waveform. Hmm. All right, let's see. I got black level here. The black level's a little elevated, and the white levels are at 90%. Let's go to the effect controls 
Oh my gracious, it's enough to get anybody depressed. Look at all those controls. What do we do? How do we fix it? <laughs> you fix it by ignoring half the filter. Well, the colors aren't bad, but the uh, black level's high and the white level's low. Why? The white level's right there at 90%. Should be at 100%. Black level's a little bit high. Let's pull it down. Here's how we do that. See these two slider bar thingies here. This input level slider allows you to adjust the black level. This input level slider allows you to adjust the white level. And this input level slider allows you to adjust the midtone. You use the black level first, you use the white level second, then if necessary, and many times it is not necessary, you adjust the grayscale. If you're looking for ways to stretch your training dollars, membership is a great value. A subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend all of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software, and we update it every week. For more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar looking at reading scopes and color correcting inside Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz slash store and look for webinar 90.